very nice to be here in St. John's, Robert Chafe, speaking to you about your work. Welcome. Um, long time admirer, of course, and uh, so very excited. I wanted to start by asking, because I know there's been big changes in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you to kind of explain the, the strands of your life currently. What are you working on just now? Oh, um, right now, uh, I just became the artistic director of a theater company. <laughs> I wonder what one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I guess the only one uh, I, I could ever become the artistic director of, I guess, Artistic Fraud of Newfoundland, which is the company I've been artistic associate with uh, for the last 10 years and, and has produced most of my work. Uh, but being an artistic director is not something I ever aspired to and it's not something I, uh, uh, you know, I ever saw myself doing. But that being said, I'm loving it so far. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm really loving it. Uh, it's terrifying. I feel the weight of responsibility of this company that, that Jill, Jill Kylie has built and that, you know, I've helped build uh, suddenly with me. But uh, we just hired a great general manager, Patrick Foran. Um, so we've got some really exciting things coming up and it feels really good and positive and um, so that's a big thing. And, and uh, last year I went back to school, yes. <laughs> which is great and exciting uh, to do my master's, to do my MFA in creative writing um, and a bit of playwriting, but mostly fiction. So I've been writing a lot of fiction and short stories, which has been uh, highly educational, as school should be, I suppose. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting time for me. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm teaching again at Memorial, which is really exciting. Well. And is this playwriting that you that you teach at Memorial? Yes, yes, yeah. It's actually really lovely that people keep asking me what I'm teaching at Memorial because I, I think, what would it be like <laughs> electrical engineering? There's nothing else in the world that I, I have any qualification to talk about besides playwriting. So it's actually, so what are you teaching at Mon? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> how kind of you to ask, uh, to think that I'm more multifaceted than I am. So that's... <laughs> So those are the three uh, major things. Yeah, that are going major on. things. I know I'm forgetting something. I know you know someone's going to watch this and go, I can't believe he didn't talk about X. Right. Uh, but it's actually the last two years have been kind of the busiest period of my life. Right. And you're working on a project, obviously. You, you, well, yeah, you must be I'm, always writing a play. Yeah. I mean, we have, uh, you know, I have uh, uh, a new play, a brand new play going up uh, at Mulgrave Mulgrave Road Theater this summer that I've been working on. Uh, and that is? That, uh, it's a piece called As Ever, okay. um, about the commercial cable building in Hazel Hill, Nova Scotia, that myself and Emmy have been working on uh, for the last couple of years. And um, we're about to, to, Artistic Fraud is about to do Under Wraps again, one of our, myself and Jill Colley's first collaboration. I'm about to do that again in May. And, uh, and I'm working on the next Artistic Fraud show. So you know, there's always stuff happening. Plus, then there's the masters and the teaching and the running of the company. So it's it's very busy. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Can you tell me what brought you to theater? How did you get interested? You know, I was just teaching workshops uh, this weekend, uh, this week. To uh, there's a high school drama festival here. So you know, I've been talking about myself a lot to a bunch of students, and I, I made a, a bold confession to them in the first five minutes of these workshops that uh, my first. Um, my first instance in the theater was in high school where I took the theater arts class because I heard it was two easy credits. <laughs> That's true. I had no interest in theater. And a friend of mine was doing the theater arts class. You should do it. It's fun. It's easy. There's not a lot of work and you have two credits, two core credits. And I said, sure. So I took it and, and, uh, and it ended up kind of developing a, a real, very early on, a real, um, appreciation and love not for the art form but for the social aspect of of it that it's uh highly ironic now that i spend all my time in a room working alone writing uh, but theater was for me a social exercise I, I love the the idea of a bunch of people coming around a common story and a common goal and um and the sense of accomplishment group accomplishment on opening night there was really really i'd never experienced anything else in my life quite like that um, and so that's what made me fall in love with it. And, and so I did it through high school. I ended up becoming part of a youth theater company here in, in, in St. John's. Met many of my, my closest friends, still my closest friends through that. I went into university uh, hoping to do um, pre-med. <laughs> 
Looking back at that, I can't believe that. What <laughs> happened? Uh, I was going to be a doctor, and then that didn't happen. Uh, I did horribly in organic chemistry. I uh, couldn't get my head around that at all. And then I, I decided I was going to become a psychologist. And all the while I was doing uh, theater through Mon Drama, met the rest of my very good friends through that, and, uh, and then started writing plays because I, I wanted to have parts to be. I wanted to have good parts, and I, I was egotistical enough to think that I should be a lead and that no one was putting me in lead parts so I said I'm going to write my own parts to be a lead and then I think that's how a lot of a lot of playwrights I know start yes I think that's uh, right and then it just kind of evolved into a career slowly I started doing uh, a lot of uh, a lot of my colleagues as well and I were involved with um, uh, a theatre company uh, Newfoundland Young People's Theatre that was um, creating and touring kind of issue-based shows to schools TYA shows and was that here in, in, that was in that Newfoundland? That was here in, in Newfoundland, yeah. Because you were also doing some work in Belle Island, but did that, that come was later? That was a bit later, yeah. Oh, okay. It was a bit later. I mean, we, uh, out of out of Mondrama and, and, uh, and Newfoundland Young People's Theatre, there was a, a kind of core group of us that kind of kept working together. Uh, and mostly uh, found projects, things that we wanted to do. Uh, my early plays were created within that core group of people, um, Jill being one of them, I think. Uh, and one of those people was Danielle Irvine, uh, who, uh, you know, went on to train at the National Theatre School and was Stratford Conservatory and was a great director. And and her and her collaborator, Anastasis, had this crazy idea to do a big bus tour, theatrical bus tour of Belle Island, Newfoundland. Belle Island is an extraordinary place, but, uh, you know, one of those um, industrial towns uh, that in the 60s, the, the, you know, the mine collapsed and, and they kind of never really economically recovered. But geographically, an incredible, beautiful place, and and uh, and really full of uh, incredible, uh, untapped folklore that had never been really explored artistically, right. not to my mind anyway. And so they thought, wouldn't it be great to do a, a, a show over there? And so I was one of the writers they hired, and one of the actors they hired to do that piece. It was a piece called Place of First Light, which was this, you know. And I look, the thing I remember about that, and I can't take credit for it because they just came to me and said, write the play, you know. But the thing I look back on on that stuff, the formation of First Light Productions and that show, and the formation of Artistic Fraud, our company, which I also didn't form, I was, you know, a, a, but a minor player at the beginning, um, was the, the sheer ambition from these kids. Like, we were all kids, you know? Huge risk. You were Huge willing to risks take risks. That, you know, yeah. Jill Kiley, 24 years old, decides to, to come back and to do, come back from school and as our first project to do a 48 person musical. And then the following year to, to tour it, <laughs> right. to tour a 48 person musical to Halifax, throw everyone on a school bus and drive to Halifax and do it in the fringe. I mean, that kind of ambition I think was- What was that project called? It was a piece called In Your Dreams Freud. It was a piece oh, that she okay. wrote uh, as her, her graduation project at York University okay. with Chris Tolley, who still runs a theater company and you know, great theater company in Toronto. And, right. um, and so she wanted to do that. I ended up playing Freud in the show. But I remember that. Like it, it was just the most normal thing in the world for right. young theater artists to do a big, massive show and, and take it to Halifax. Like we were, we, our original dream was to take it to the Edinburgh Fringe. It's crazy, right? <laughs> you can't take a one person show to the Edinburgh Fringe. It's so expensive. We were going to take this 48 person show to, you know, so we took it to Halifax. And, and this, what year would this have been? 95, 95. I think we, did, we okay. took it to Halifax. And, yeah. Um, and then, you know, so two years later, Danielle and, and, and her collaborator, Anastasis, come up with this idea that we're going to have, you know, a 12-actor strong, 20-person strong company do a five-hour-long uh, touring show on Belle Island involving uh, boat, bus, and foot travel, incorporating 30 scenes. You know, just massive, massive. And then they, you know, within, uh, within uh, four or five months of conceiving this, they actually found the money, found the resources to make it happen as a fully professional enterprise. The ambition of that right, and the confidence involved at such a young age from, from people like Anna and Danielle and Jill. It seems uh, very is, is joyful incredible. too. Like, Complete. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was saying to, I was saying to uh, these students uh, yesterday when I was teaching this workshop, you know, they were asking me how things have changed. And I said, you know, don't get me wrong. I love my job. I love my job, but it became a job, right? Like it's when I go upstairs now to my office to work, it's work and it's really hard work because uh, I've, I've developed um, 
I developed a method of working and a, a process of working and, and, and I kind of set a standard for myself based upon past work that I have to match and, and you know, exceed. And so it's work, you know, like any other kind of job. And, but the beginning, this stuff was fun. Yes. And so putting together, like, you know, Anna had, Anna Stasis was a, a, you know, an actress, a good actress and still works with us. Um, but she also had a business degree. She was one of those people, you know. Right. So for her, putting together the resources to make a festival like this happen was really exciting and fun and joyful. Yeah. I, I think she was younger than us. She was, you know, 24, 23, 24 when that happened. So that's always stuck with me that that I think at the beginning I benefited there's no question I benefited greatly by the company I kept right I still do I mean of course right. we all yeah. do but um, collaborative absolutely uh, uh, but for for me if I had not encountered if I had not encountered people like Danielle and Anna and Jill Kylie and Petrina Bromley and these people that became really important uh, as collaborators uh, with vision with these right. massive uh, uh, this massive vision, unhindered vision. Um, I think, uh, I, I don't think I'd be doing, certainly not doing the kind of work I'm doing now.